Welcome to Tools in Process, a new series of short videos in which I will talk about the tools I use in my process for accomplishing certain goals. Today I will cover some aspects of heat treating. Heat treating is the process of hardening carbon steel to specific hardness. It requires heat and controlled cooling of the steel. My heat source for long swords is an even heat KF45 electric kiln. For smaller knives, I normally use the forge to bring the steel up to critical temperature. As preparation, I remove all vertical grinder marks from swords by draw filing. Another important tip is that the sword needs to be on its edge instead of lying on the floor. Putting the sword on the floor of the kiln leads to uneven heating and warping of the blade. Since my high carbon steel is 1075, I program the ramp master to bring the temperature to 1500 Fahrenheit, that's 815 Celsius, and hold it there for 6 minutes. To find the critical temperature of high carbon steels, you need to refer to a table that you can often find on the internet. Curiously, when searching for 1075, you will find at least 4 different temperatures, and 3 of them are completely wrong. The first step in my heat treating regime is to normalize the blade. Since steel is in crystal form, the repeated heating in the forge causes the steel to form larger and larger grains that make it brittle. Slowly cooling it down from its critical temperature reduces the size of these grains. This is also a good opportunity to check for warping, which may occur when the bevels have been ground unevenly. I was also hoping to show you some recalcitrance, which happens right when the carbon in the iron matrix transitions from austenite to ferrite. That transition releases visible heat. You have to check my spear video where you can see there clearly. Here I unfortunately stepped into the video. The next step after normalizing is hardening the blade. Steel can only be hardened when it has enough carbon content. Generally, the more carbon, the harder you can make the steel. As I had mentioned before, the steel has a crystal form and the position of the carbon in the iron matrix determines the hardness of the steel. There are three carbon arrangements you should be aware of. Ferrite, which is soft, martensite, which is hard, and austenite, which is the carbon arrangement when the steel is at critical temperature. When working with pattern welded steel, the pattern becomes visible under heat due to color differences in oxidization, as you can see for the sword here. Now it's time to heat the blade back up to critical temperature and then quench it quickly in a high-speed quenching oil. The oil will cool the blade down rapidly and cause the austenite to convert to the hard martensite. When quenching an oil, I always wear full face protection. If the oil gets too hot, it can rapidly ignite and flames can spurt up into your face. Before quenching the blade, I quickly check it with a magnet to verify that it is no longer magnetic. When I insert the blade, I also move it up and down vertically to prevent a rapid transition of hardness in the tang. Coming back to the quenching oil, I'm using Parx 50, which is a high flash point, and my quenching tank is also large enough so that the whole tank does not become too hot. Other oils with lower flash points are much more dangerous to use, so be careful. After quenching, the blade is brittle, but the pattern so much more visible. If the blade has been ground unevenly, heated unevenly or quenched unevenly, it may develop a warp and as a result may no longer be straight. However, I will show you a trick that you can use during tempering to straighten the blade. Before we go there, let's quickly check the hardness with a file. On the hard part of the blade, the file will skid, and on the unhardened parts, it will bite. In this particular case, I think the blade could have been harder and I should have requenched it. However, if you listen to the noise the file is making, you will hear that it somewhat skids on the blade, but bites on the tang. The quenching process should have brought the blade to maximum hardness. Tempering reduces the hardness but increases toughness. Since my blade developed a slight bend, let me show you the trick for making it straight again. I clamp it to a thick rectangular bar of steel and hold the whole contraption at tempering temperatures for about 60 minutes. The final hardness is determined by the tempering temperature and is different for each steel. For swords I usually temper around 600 Fahrenheit and for knives usually somewhere around 400. That's 315 Celsius and 200 Celsius, respectively. After tempering, the blade is no longer brittle and ready to receive some abuse. 
That's about it for now. However, tools and process will come back to heat treating at some point and I will show you how to heat treat in a forge even when the forge is too short for the blade. If there are tools and processes you would like me to explain, please let me know in the comments. These videos are not meant to give a complete explanation of everything, but each one will highlight some interesting experience. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Sharing links to my videos on social networks is appreciated as well. As always, many thanks to my patrons. If you would like to join the Patreon community, follow the link in the video. See you next time.